So for many reasons, we think that traveling is the best holiday activity. However, when you're also juggling traveling with a long-term medical condition, there are a few things that you need to consider. All right, so we have for you eight tips that you might find useful when traveling with a medical condition. Mm -hmm. According to the CDC, the most commonly encountered in-flight medical events are neurologic events, cardiac events, which is your heart, respiratory events, gastrointestinal events, and I won't say the next one because it's just fainting. The mm. next one is vasovagal or vasovagal syncope, which means um, fainting. fainting. <laughs> so they said the first rule for travelers with underlying health problems such as cancer, heart disease, lung conditions, anemia, and diabetes are those on any regular form of medication or treatment or recently had surgery is to consult with your doctor before deciding to travel by ear. Very important. Some people don't consult the doctor because they don't want to hear that they shouldn't travel. Mm -hmm. But it's important that they do. Um, so here are the, the tips. First, carry your medication with you and plan to run out. So, so if erupting volcanoes and superstorms have taught us anything, it's that travel can be unpredictable. So planning to run out of medication means you won't cut it close. So don't say, okay, I'm going away for 30 days. So let me take 30 days worth of medication. You'll have the extra you need in case your trip is extended for some reason. Most travel experts recommend that travelers carry their medication with them in their carry-ons and in their original prescription containers. This way, if you're separated from your luggage, your health won't be at risk. And if something happens, yeah. so for example, if you faint and somebody says, is he on medication? If I open the thing, McCancy said, this is what medication you're taking. Other than I say 20 pill, I'm going to know yeah. what I mean. What do you mean by plan to run out? So, so if you're going for 30 days and you're supposed to take three tablets a day, you carry the exact 90 tablets. Yes, it means plan to make sure you don't run out. Well, plan say to go run out. <laughs> But you're correct. Another the proper way of yeah, saying it. So you plan that, that in it case that it way. run out, you're going to have extra. Yeah. Come here, say plan to run out. It's almost like you deliberately <laughs> run out of the medication. <laughs> you're correct. Wear your medical alert identification mm -hmm. plus alternatives. You know, sometimes you see the little bracelet tells you what kind of condition you have. So if you have a medical condition, a medical alert bracelet is critical, folks. But correct. some medical conditions don't require patients to carry something that identifies their condition. This works just fine if you're traveling with another person. That person is in a condition to speak for you. Mm -hmm. um, example, they are conscious after the bus accident if you are right. not. Right, because if you go and nobody is there to tell them if you're allergic to penicillin, yep. for example, yep. or if you have an allergy and they should say, look, you probably ate peanuts, sorry. Yep. So it's important. Carry your basic medical information on you. Whether or not you wear a medical alert identifier of some sort, it's most useful to have your basic medical information, and this would include your primary care physician contact number, very important, your health insurance information, your travel insurance information, names and dosages of medications, list of allergies, and current illnesses. In most cases, this information can be printed onto a small card. Carry a couple of these so you have spares and tuck one into your wallet or money belt. So I, I carry my blood type with me at all times as well. I don't know my blood type. <laughs> <laughs> have have travel, travel medical with pre-existing condition coverage. Yeah. So not everyone with a medical condition needs pre-existing condition coverage um, with their travel medical insurance plan. And the only way to know for certain is by understanding how travel insurance companies define a pre-existing condition. Mm -hmm. What's the next one? Carry a doctor's letter if you have an implanted device. Most travelers with implanted medical devices know that it helps to carry some type of identification or a doctor's note. Security checks for travelers, you don't want to go in and you're fitted with an artificial joint or a pacemaker or other internal device. And every time you go to say, burr, 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 mm -hmm. and you say, I'll be in a pacemaker, but then they don't believe you. So you need to carry cardiac devices can also be affected by the magnets used by security. So it's important to understand from your doctor how best to go through airport security. All right. So the airlines are quite strict about those traveling with oxygen and for good reason. Mishandle 
oxygen tanks have blown planes out of the sky. So you'll need to research the rules and regulations for the airline on yeah. which you're flying and be sure to think carefully about any bus, train, or other transportation services you'll be using. So that's yeah. if you're traveling with oxygen or oxygen concentrators. Yeah. Do some research. Know how to get medical care where you're going. Once you've prepared for your trip, your next responsibility is to know how to get medical care where you're going. If you're traveling domestically, that's a lot easier than if you're traveling abroad, especially if you're going to a place where you're unfamiliar with the local language. Yep. So you want to know if I'm going, this is, this is a place that is English friendly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, have a backup plan. Stuff happens when you're traveling with a medical condition. It's important to have a backup plan um, just in case. So you drop your medication overboard while on a cruise, having coffee, copies of your prescriptions, a travel assistance services line to call, and your physician's number um, will be really, really good. Yeah. You know, Bailey has um, said earlier about people needing to know what they're allergic to. True story, I went to um, a trip with a national football team and uh, the kids were told to stay in their rooms. So the manager is doing a walkthrough and while he's in a room, here comes this baller, run come in the room when he's not supposed to be in the room. So the manager said, so what are you doing in here? And he said he had a headache. He said, I don't think so fast. He just said, I have a headache. I'm going to come check the baller for two tablets. True story. So the baller does, so the manager said, well, who have the tablet then? Mm. So to him, Bridget, I help him out. him, Bridget, take out two tablets and give him. And him take it, and him go back to bed. Next morning at breakfast, he turns up with this, it's the biggest shades me ever seen in my life. Cover him whole face. And when we told him to take it off, his eyes were swollen, wow. almost shut. Because he was allergic to the tablets that he was given. We had no idea. Um, good thing we knew, obviously, how to find his father and stuff. And we had to call back to Jamaica to find mm -hmm. out what him allergic and rush mm -hmm. him out to, to get it. In the, in the end, it was a funny story. Um, because I don't know them things so fast. <laughs> when the manager said, where are they? He said, hey, here, 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 take out two tablets. I said, two tablets, set up yourself. Nice. <laughs> well, so that's important. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny. No. Yeah. But he could have actually lost his life because yeah. he was allergic to the tablets. And people are allergic to, di to, to different yeah, things, you know. Like Glenn Campbell is allergic to fish. Bad, bad, bad. So if you eat it and you touch him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I'm seriously allergic to The strangest to thing with me is yeah. I'm allergic to orange juice. Mm. But if I eat orange, nothing wrong with me. Mm. Strange, strange thing. But if I drink the orange juice, in two seconds, I sound like have the worst flu in wow, life. But wow. if I eat an orange, it don't bother me. Yeah. So then I let me say, long time you know trying an orange juice, but me try it. So me try it, and same thing happened to me. We were doing an ad, myself and Simon, and they gave me about this orange juice, and Simon said, don't make him drink it. And the lady said, no man, it's not going to bother him. And by the time I pulled down the glass, I could hardly talk. So you know, we have to sit down for about an hour till, <laughs> till it wears out. And Simon cussed. And Simon cussed, and said, I tell him, don't give <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm No, and you see, and that's important because people too tend to ignore people's issues. Say, we say, I'm allergic to peanut. Then we yeah. say, a little bit tonight. It's not yeah, going to do you nothing, yeah, but it will. Yeah, it will. Man. Yeah. All right. Don't let an illness stop you from enjoying your holiday. But if you have a medical condition, travel responsibly. All right.